Hello everyone. In today's session, you are going to discuss how to write a context-free grammar for certain examples. Uh, so I'll take some of the context-free gram uh, languages, and for that language, I'll show you how to write a context-free grammar. And uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to go ahead with uh, writing a context-free grammar for some syntactic structure. Uh, this context-free grammar is used whenever you want to uh, represent something syntactically like a programming language has its own syntax structure when i want to write a statement a declaration statement or a conditional statement it has its own way of representation and uh, not only in programming languages like using a natural language uh, when i want to frame a statement that statement has its own way of representation or some grammatical representation is there right so whenever a grammatical representation comes into picture we use context-free grammar for representing the grammatic structure and even in chat gpt when we want to choose uh, check whether the sentence is in proper grammatic structure or not inbuilt it is uh, it is using this context-free grammar representation i'll show you some examples for each and everything so first i'll start with very basic example like a palindrome of a string or a parenthesis matching and all and i'll show you how to write a context-free grammar for it so first i'll take this palindrome what is a palindrome and I, for simplicity i'm going to take the input is made up of a and b okay so i'm just going to write a context-free grammar that accept, accepts all palindrome of a string and uh, whenever the input is of the combination of a and b and what is a palindrome a string and reverse should be same like for example when i have a a b a a then the reverse of this also should be same so whatever is the first element it has to match with the last element and whatever is the next uh, element that has to match with the last before element and this goes on okay so now input is made up of the combination of a and b when i want to write a context -free grammar i have a starting symbol okay so s is my starting symbol and this s is made up of input will either start with a or start with b if it start with a the last element also should be a so either it starts with a if it starts with a last element should also be a if it starts with b the last element should also be b right now what is the middle portion of it and this will be iterated right like when the starting and ending matches then the priorly like the previous two matches or should also matches so what i can do is i'll just use another variable as a here okay so at least one element of a b should be there or you can directly write it as s also okay so this s is called recursively either input starts with a or starts with b it should end with b also okay so if it starts with s then s can be substituted as either a s a or s can be substituted as b s b or any combination of a and b but when you compare the last element matches the first and last element matches all the time so it accepts the palindrome and what will be your ending condition so ending condition will be the last level see when you are writing a program what is the initial thing that needs to be like uh, um, defining the borders right so at least one element like when you consider an input as a it has to be accepted it is a palindrome when you consider input as b it is also a palindrome and two a's it is also acceptable two b's it is also acceptable so what i can do here is for this middle portion of this s i can either substitute with either a or b when the string is of odd length okay when it is of odd length like this then the middle element doesn't have a matching pair okay so this a and this a matches if i have a b the last element should be b any combination but the middle element doesn't have a pair for example you have this madam right m m matches a a matches for this d you don't have a match okay so here your input is made up of the combination of a and b so middle element is a single unit and that will take either a or b as a value okay so this is one possible way when the uh, palindrome string that you have taken is of a odd length and what will happen if it is an even length condition when it is an even length condition it goes like this right uh, b b a a these two matches these two matches and the middle portion should be a matching pair for even length when it is just a a or b b a a or anything the middle portion should also be a matching pair so i can write either epsilon here or a a followed by b b here okay so this is how we write a context free grammar so here s is the only variable you have and what is a variable there what all the tuple notation we have for uh, a context free grammar we have this representation right v t p s so variable anything that is written in this side 
that has a prediction for it we call it as a variable so here your variables are only one variable as s and your uh, terminal symbol is something in this place other than s whatever you have it here okay you have either a or b your input is of the combination of a and b right it is your terminal symbol is equivalent to this input in a push down automata okay and you have a production production is nothing but this rules whatever rule you write right that is called your production and s is your starting symbol here also use s as the starting symbol okay so s is the common notation uh, need not to be s all the time you can use your own way of representation since it is easy and flexible i use s as the starting symbol all the time got it so this is what palindrome of a string and uh, for the next example i'll take parenthesis matching for parenthesis matching i'll take either this curly brace or no, normal bracket or your square bracket or anything okay so anything that if i have in my bro in my program like usually your programming language i has this right when you have a open parenthesis that should have a close parenthesis and that should fall into the proper scope okay and to write a context free grammar for these representation i take s okay so s is the starting symbol if it starts with curly braces it should end with curly braces like what we have discussed for the previous example okay if it starts with a ends with a similarly if there is an open parenthesis there should be a matching close parenthesis and if there is an open parenthesis like this it should have it and similarly for square bracket also and this s might take any statement for example like for the stopping criteria i'll take it as a okay see like it has to accept like this open parenthesis this should be accepted right so how can you check whether it is accepting or not draw a parse tree for it start from the starting symbol i want a open curly parenthesis so i take this production so i'll replace it with open parenthesis s close parenthesis now i have s and next is your open bracket a close bracket so this can be replaced with okay so you have another element here right so you can use any statements too okay so this s can be replaced with s is here and this s can be replaced with open parenthesis a or oh sorry s close parenthesis and this as a and this can be replaced with square bracket a square bracket sorry s square bracket and this s can be replaced with a okay that's it when you check what all the leaf element from left to right you start from this curly braces come here you have your open parenthesis followed by a followed by close parenthesis and then you have your square bracket a square bracket and this is then end with the curly braces you got your input derived your input okay see always when you are writing a context free grammar check it once whether the uh, the representation accepts all these components or not okay sometimes we guess that things will work like easy but sometimes it will need need some updations too okay so this is for parenthesis matching and i'll take one more example i'll uh, i'll stop with this uh, i'll take an example of a power n b power n normal context free grammar so when there is an a there should be a equal and b for it okay so when a statement consists of a that should end with b so any number of a's that has to be followed by a b and this has to be iterated for n number of times so the context free grammar can be represented like this when it starts with a it should end with a and based on the value your n takes okay the limitation if n is greater than or equal to 1 at least 1a 1b should be there so what i do i create another variable here a okay and this a can be replaced with it is it it is your recursive procedure okay so i take a here and um, this a can be iterated n number of times or it takes epsilon as a value okay so what it do when i just have one single what all the input accepted by this language here this input accepted by this language is either 1a 1b or 2a 2b or 3a 3b or and it goes on okay so for the minimal level it, we have to verify whether it is working or not so first i'll check with s replaced with a a b and if i replace this with epsilon then it derives ab and if i replace this with a a b it goes for n number of iteration and always this stops with epsilon and generates it 
okay so for this length h it is acceptable and what will you do when your condition is a power n b power n n greater than or equal to 0 okay so when n value is greater than or equal to 0 it accepts epsilon 2 so what we can write it as start from s instead of creating a new variable as a i call s again and use epsilon here okay so you have s tends to epsilon directly to accept 0 and s tends to a s b and this can be replaced with either epsilon or again a s b and it keeps on going you can derive any number of elements for it okay so based on the limitation that is set for n this is also an important criteria to write your context free grammar got it so what will you do for this language a power n b power 2 n and n greater than or equal to 2 so can you represent these kind of languages again you have your s for 1 a you should have 2 b's that is the only constraint okay so it is greater than or equal to 1 okay so here i have oh, it is the value is greater than or equal to 1 at least 1 a 2 b should be there so this a can be replaced with again b b followed by epsilon okay so this is the context free grammar representation so based on the language that is given to you you have to find a way to represent that in terms of a context free grammar okay Thank you.